Good morning. Welcome to our Good Friday service. It will begin in just a few moments. And before it begins, I wanted us to pause for a moment and think about this day. So, this day is sober under any conditions, but it is an especially sober day in the midst of our global pandemic. In a harsh season of our world's history, we gather together as Christians today to find hope and community in our shared witness to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And that word witness is important. I wanted to remind all of us that the word martyr in the original Greek meaning of the word means witness. So in the early church, when someone was called a martyr, uh, they were martyred for their faith. They died, but they died because they were a witness to the grace and the power of Jesus Christ. In our Celtic Christian tradition, our Anglican Christian tradition, there are three kinds of martyrs. There are red martyrs who die for their faith. There are white martyrs, people who set their lives apart to pray like monks and nuns, like our St. Margaret sisters and our St. Anne sisters and our brothers of SSJE, the Society of St. John the Evangelist in, in our Diocese of Massachusetts. And then there are green martyrs. Green martyrs are witnesses who live for Christ. And on this sober day, uh, we are all invited to be and remember that our vocation is to be green martyrs, green witnesses. This service is a service where we begin at noon because the witnesses of the early church told us that Christ's crucifixion began at noon and lasted for three hours. So we who are gathered today, and if you're watching this video later, you who are gathered this evening, are all shared witnesses to the sober and terrible crucifixion. It's uh, a chance for us to gather together and be in solidarity as witnesses. In a moment, our service will begin. And I'm going to invite you to turn to page 277 in our Book of Common Prayer. The service will begin in silence, so please turn to page 227 so you'll be ready when we have the opening sentences and share them. And in the tradition of St. Andrew's Church, we do not have a sermon following the Gospel reading. We meet the Gospel reading in silence and in soberness. Similarly, our service will end in silence because there really is nothing to say. It's enough to witness to the crucifixion. So please join me in turning to page oh, 277 in our Book of Common Prayer. We'll have a few minutes of silence, and the service will begin on page 276. Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading 
comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It's a passage that we Christians know as a suffering servant song. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13 through chapter 53, verse 6. A reading from Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high, just as there were many who astonished at him. So marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, infirmity and as one from whom others hide their face. He was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Our service continues with Psalm 22, verses 1 through 11. The psalm is found on page 610 in our Book of Common Prayer. I want to invite us to recite it responsively, verse by verse. I'll read the odd verses, and I invite you to join me in the even verses. Page 610. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praise of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads saying, he trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. This is a reading from John's Holy Gospel, chapter 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. 
Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. And when the chief priests and the pol police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no case against him. Then Jesus, then the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he is claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. And they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed them. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put, in, put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. And Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. And this was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes amongst themselves and for my clothing, they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. 
a jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation that Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a great day of solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths according to the burial customs of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Good Friday service continues with the solemn colics. They are found on page 277. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the whole Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for Alan, our bishop, and all the peoples of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, and for all those in this commonwealth, this nation, and this world who are about to be baptized, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth, 
and for those in authority among them. For Donald, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, and for all who serve the common good. That by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body, mind, or spirit. For the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, the sick, the wounded, and the crippled. For those in loneliness, fear, and anguish. For those who face temptation, doubt, and despair. For the sorrowful and the bereaved. For prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger. That God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of God's love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ, for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, and for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to our God and for, pray for the grace of a holy life that with all who have departed this world and who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal life, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things that were cast down are being raised up, and things that have grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
when we asked Jesus how we were to pray, he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dying, to your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting light and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen.